Hidden along the lake of Kenosha, Wisconsin, is a movie theater filled with history, filled with stories and personal experiences of things that some would say are just not normal. Join us today and find out what the Kenosha Theater has in store for us. You, you look very, uh, like, mysterious. Hello, welcome back to our second ghost video haunting, whatever you want to call it. This time is actually going to be more professional. We have information on this place, <laughs> and to help us with that information is Case. Hi, my name's Case. Uh, I'm one of the two owners of this building that are left, <laughs> and, uh, this is the Kenosha Theater. Welcome. It's a 2,400 seat theater built originally in 1927. And uh, it operated as a theater for around 30 years, closed in 1963. It's gone through some damage and we've tried to do what we can to preserve what we can. And uh, the past couple of years, we've been doing a lot more of that. So what do you want to know? What else? Who are the most famous people that you know that were here while it was a theater? I think Frank Sinatra and the Three Stooges are the ones that everybody everybody points out. I think the Isley Brothers, I think we got posters of them here. There was the magician Blackstone who made an elephant disappear off the stage. You can see there's like tie downs and pulleys and stuff. Like there, there's like loops coming out of the floor in some places, it's hard to see them now, but. I'm just trying to figure out which door they're gonna come through. I think you could fit an elephant through there. I guess so. Have you had any personal experiences or is it all, you know people that have had experiences here? We take people through for tours, people who rent the space out to shoot uh, occasionally, and there's always some kind of story. A lot of it's like experiences, but a lot of people see, they see a very specific ghost. Mm -hmm. They see it doing the same thing. Other than that, there's a variety of weird technical things that will happen. Uh, people's cameras, people's equipment will just shit out on them. Uh, can I swear? Yeah. Okay, yeah. We can say fuck now. Cool. YouTube unbanned the word. <laughs> Hell yeah. So what's the ghost that everybody's seeing do the same thing? We usually hear it described as a guy in a trench coat stepping out of the way. Sometimes in the corner of your vision, sometimes in the center of it, but right at the edge of something and just sort of moving behind it. That's the most common ghost sighting description. And I've had friends of mine like freak out and think there was someone in here, someone on the stage or something. Um, that would run out and be like, I think there's someone on the stage. Uh, a friend of mine I've, I was in a band with, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, we were setting up some amps and stuff in here and he comes running out and says like, I think somebody got in the building. I think someone's on the stage. And he described, uh, like I saw this dude in like a trench coat and it looked like he was like hiding off on the side of the stage. And I heard that and I was like, oh, that's just the ghost. Don't worry about it. You said that you guys have only, you've only re fully restored the front room yeah. and just that alone took one to two tons of plaster? Yes, uh, plaster is very heavy between the extra stuff we had to put on the walls, the stuff we had to patch. We would hope that the more ornate stuff, mm -hmm. we could probably just get CNC'd out of high density foam okay. and then uh, treated and painted so it would have the same, uh, it, you know, once you paint it, it will look like the same as all the plaster yeah. pieces from the outside. That's like a next step. If we want to get like a CNC machine in here, it's a long-term fundraising goal. If but, you want to um, check the description, we'll have the link for that fundraiser down if anybody wants to donate and help restore this building to what it once was instead of the decaying castle of a movie set. Anything would be incredibly appreciated because uh, it was just through like some online streams recently mm -hmm. that we did that we fundraised enough money to be able to do the front. It would be cool to uh, be able to improve our process. You want to know who put up the money to build the place? Because that's an interesting yeah, factoid. The place was actually founded by one of the founders of Universal Studios. The oh. guy who put the money up was a guy named Carl Lemley, hmm. who was a stage producer on the East Coast. He was 
from Germany, but his family had immigrated into Wisconsin. He ended up moving out to New York, became like a stage producer, got into that whole thing, and then decided to move out to California with a bunch of other people and start a movie studio because film was just catching on. So that became Universal Studios and he made his money and he started building theaters that could do both stage production and film production so they could you know send their reels out and have them be seen and so places like this would be built like ornately like this to get them to see this cool new you know moving picture thing hmm. and while still having all of the like stage production and the kind of stuff that everyone was already familiar with. It was among the first few to be able to play um, The Jazz Pianist, which was the first widely distributed movie with sound. And they say we're Kenoware. Yeah. We're Kenoware. But we did all of this. When Carl Emley was in New York, they used to call him the little giant of Kenosha. It was like a disparaging term. He wasn't even from Kenosha. That was just the one no-name town that they knew out in New York. So they would just call him that. So he built this place. It's the biggest uh, theater in this area of, or I think in the entire city when it was operational. And I think is bigger than anything that's operational now, I'm pretty sure. And then after the place was closed down, what year did it close down? I believe it closed in 1963. 63? Yeah. The next thing that it was after that was a warehouse for the LeBlanc factory because the people who sold the building made them sign a non-compete clause with the other theaters down the street because they were owned by the same person. They didn't want to competing with their theaters. Okay. So this place was a warehouse for a good amount of time. Uh, I think it was empty for a good amount of time and then uh, a conglomerate of people involving some members of my family, like my grandpa, my dad, my uncle, uh, and several other realtors that wanted to have another asset, they pooled their money, got whatever loans and things they needed figured out, and they bought this place. The goal was to work with a citizens group, like a volunteer group for a while, and try to get big funders, and try to also you know, scout out different people, contact different people, that could help. Um, and one of the people back in the 80s, I think the late 80s that they ran into, was this guy named Ray Shepardson. Mm -hmm. And he had restored like 40 theaters like this, built in the same era for the same general purpose. And he would restore them and also give them a business plan mm -hmm. so that they could actually run and make money, like from the get-go. He was just, he just wanted things to go and happen. Uh, and so he restored a bunch of these theaters. And by the time he had got to us, the economy had changed a little bit. It was harder to get big funding. It wasn't mm -hmm. quite like the 80s, you know, like the, the booming part of the 80s and mm -hmm. the 70s when he did most of his stuff. And uh, there were already so many theaters like this that were at the, the size that, um, you know, he was trying to run. Because a lot of the theaters, they would be this ornate, but they wouldn't be as big. Mm -hmm. Some of them are bigger. He did like the Chicago Theater in, uh, in Chicago. Did the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles. He did Playhouse Square in Cleveland. Okay. So all of these really old theaters that were starting to be dilapidated and just in disuse. He would come in with the team to restore it and then put somebody at the head of it, give it a business plan and get him off the ground. He had a few other theater projects in the area, some that were done but weren't running well, and uh, they basically all weighed on him, and he took his life in 2014. Oh, geez. After trying to make one of his theaters work and to get another one going for 14 years and basically getting the runaround from every big business owner in every city government he would talk to. Mm -hmm. And when he was used to things being easier and people would want to get things done, uh, yeah. the times had changed apparently and he just could not take it anymore. Like the, the saying the redheaded stepchild is a thing that is like so difficult to work with and it is mostly because of the local community that didn't want to deal with it? Local community and the changing economy. Post 9-11, things were a little bit different. Uh, about what people were interested in spending their money on. 
And uh, post-2008, especially, city mm -hmm. governments and uh, big businesses were very stingy about what they were spending their money on. And, um, you know, the volunteer group fizzled out over time and the, you know, we would need to do certain things and sign off with certain things with the city to make new developments on the building and none of the other owners wanted to sign off on anything. They just wanted to be bought out. So our family bought them out a couple of years ago and uh, since then we've removed roughly 50 tons of debris and have renovated with about maybe one or two tons more new plaster and other materials My uh, in the past three years. 2023 now? Yeah. Still got a ways to go, but it looks, I feel yeah. like, I assume it looks a lot better than it used to. Uh, it's, it's a lot more open in here now, even though there's stuff on the ground here. Um, there used to be way more hanging, hanging chads, hanging uh, mm -hmm. brackets and wires and stuff like that. The front looks, you know, mm -hmm. new. Yeah, the front <laughs> looks it's, new. Uh, that's, that's fresh, that's the freshest thing in here. I can still smell the paint walking in there a little bit. Yeah. I feel like with how the generation is changing to, is going back to kind of like the 1920s, a lot more people are liking a lot more of the retro stuff. There's a lot of groups that like to do the theater scene now. Yeah, and we've we've talked to some people mm -hmm. uh, around the city. People have come to us with some plans. We're talking to a few other people that are scouting out whoever they can to see what other connections they can form. And uh, there has been a rekindling of things, uh, especially since last year we ran a fundraiser ourselves and just just online, just through Twitch, playing video games and having people donate. And we raised enough money to do the whole front lobby. So uh, there's been a turnaround and there's been more interest and uh, we've been working with more people who've been showing interest and it's, things are looking up right now. Get some of you guys to help out, at least yeah. scout out. Yeah, we need some, uh, we could use some volunteer work sometime. That's gonna be the intro. That's perfect for me. Sounds good to me. Cool. All right, are you done or wait? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. The Kenosha Theater holds many secrets and a lot of history, but now we're gonna take a look around and see what we can find. So this is it. So this is the only room that's been fully redone, with walls and ceiling wise, and it took them one to two tons of plaster to redo. This was like the lobby. You ready to see the creepiest shit you can see? Mm-hmm. new main to Kino Dirt I was thinking about that the whole time I was in here. Oh, also, there's bats. Yeah, there's a couple bats that they just fight. Each you'll, other. you'll hear some bumping. It's bats. My old house used to have bats in the basement. Uh, this place. Um, we need to be very careful going into the basement. There's a trap door that's covered. If you go down, it's just a ramp. You'll probably bust an angle. But let's go downstairs because it's nice. That's <laughs> He said, he said for sure, don't climb that ladder. Oh, Why? I wasn't fucking right planning on, on that shit. <laughs> All right. Where are we going, Andrew? We're going to go into the really creepy basement. Basement. Oh, hey, the lights are on. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, right here is where the trap door is. So don't. So back here, before we go down there, this was all changing rooms for like performers. Okay. So like they have their sink and it cut off here. There's the like the partition. You can see like these little stubs on the floor basically. That was like the wall partitions. Me personally, I don't want to walk away with the ladder anymore. Yeah. Yeah, we got that. How do you feel already? Uh, I feel a lot more freaked out from the school. Yeah. The biggest no-no, I guess, is this spot. It's coming into this room. Is all live electric, electric wires and about one to two feet of water. So that's basically where like the elephant's foot is, essentially. <laughs> so glad I brought my fucking steel toes. Yeah, that's a good idea. I would already have blistering toes otherwise. This just feels the creepiest to me. It's like the most lit though. I saw a stuffed kitten, kitten though. Uh, kick. Kick. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the, no kitten. Oh. 
Those Timberlands? Huh? You want a turbo in your car? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. That for sure probably weighs as much as my car. <laughs> oh. Bro, why would you turn it off? Or how are we gonna get to the teleporter? We're gonna go upstairs now. I wanna die. I mean, like, I'll be honest, I'm not as scared as the first one, but... One of those things about being right here, they said they were here, got pictures of a... found a bird skeleton in here, took a picture of it for an album cover, mm. covered it back up, came back nope. later... Nope. Yeah. Nope. Mm. Heard a scrape to my right, I'm good. Um, I feel like I'm in as above, so below with this camera right now. Shut the fuck up. This is a men's bathroom. Oh yeah. You can be in here if you'd like. He said you can piss in these urinals. Sorry. I don't know where it would go. We don't need to disturb you. Who this one's open. Sorry. You should show them the toilet paper from the 1920s. I don't know if it's in this one. Maybe it was in the woman's room. This one? It's, it's right. Yeah, there it is. Oh my god. This is a piece of toilet paper from the 1920s. Here. I feel like it's better quality than the shit we have. It feels, huh? it feels like a Burger it's King napkin. It's too ply. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too ply, but it it's not soft. You're feeling that and you think that's good? It's better than the it, one ply. It's All better right. than the shit my work gives me. You can use that toilet then, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> All you do. Jesus Christ. What, Andrew? Fat. Oh, there's a bat in here? Yeah. Squeak, squeak. Right oh, there he is. Wait, aim, aim at him. Whoa! He's doing circles. So this is the woman's bathroom. This whole conspiracy theory board is fake. <laughs> somebody shot like a short film in here about somebody's murder, and it's fake. I'm guessing the reason this is like slanted down, it's semi wheelchair. It is. So the, those last if you could not make those noises, please, please for the love of God. I'm trying to cope. Oh, wow. Well. I'm not turning my flashlight off, y'all. It's so crazy. How are they so quiet? Crazy. Fucking white people. Going to places by themselves. You're here. Yeah. We covered this last time. Like I said, I'm white. I'm not that white. Oh, okay. Well, you're here, aren't you? I don't go anywhere by myself. Yeah, yeah you, you hear him squeaking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, do you know anything about this place? No. So, this place was designed to look like a 1500 Spanish castle. It was designed by one of the founders of Universal Studios, who ended up, you know. You're coming out here and doing this? Yeah. It's very particular. The blue used to span all the way across the top, and it used to look like the starry night sky. But if you aim your lights at the ceiling there, you see those little light fixtures? Yeah. Those light fixtures on the ceiling are the exact placement of the stars. And they got the star data from UW-Madison. Wow. That's fucking weird. Exploring this place with friends is one thing and seeing everything this place used to be and then comparing it to what it is now, it's like seeing something's life, the life of a building, seeing it be brought up, lived in, but unfortunately, all things die. So, the new device I bought, $200, was this REM pod. And it, all you do is just set it up somewhere and it'll detect temperature changes and things being close to it. So like, just... And then you can change the range on it too. Did you disarm the bomb? Yes. Yeah, what the fuck? Simon says back away. It's angry. But while y'all were up there, you gotta hold up. <coughs> Just touch it too. 
god. But while y'all were up there, I left it on for a little bit, and it just started doing the temperature change, and it started speaking to me in Morse code. Oh, also, while y'all were up there, I was over here with this thing. The shit was spiky everywhere I went. And then I told it I would talk to it on the stage, and I came back over here, and it was gone. So, should we talk to them? I heard like a bass noise. Okay, uh, that's uh, one of the neighbors, Civil. They warned us that they play really loud bass throughout the night. <laughs> Must have been a quick song. <laughs> <laughs> so we set this up over here, and that's going to capture temperature changes, which it's already capturing due to this door. But if anything gets close to that, then these cat balls, whenever they're moved, they'll light up, as you just saw. So we're back here again. Back in the interview section. I lost my chair. It's mine now. <laughs> so what are we trying to do? Just trying to ask? Trying to communicate with it somehow before we have to dig into the spirit box. Do you want to talk about what Case said it was? Like what it appears to be? Uh, so the ghost that's over here comes from over there where you have your back to, which is why I set the REM pod up over there. It appears like a guy in a beige trench coat, and as soon as like you look at him, he like steps out of the way. Like isn't he can, isn't like, that just a, willingly live. Isn't that just a perk from Fallout? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you never seen the Mysterious Stranger perk? Oh my god. Look at him I told it to come up here and talk to us, and it stopped going off down there. Are you up here? And want to talk to us? Can you give us a sign? Yep. Hey man, don't do that. You wanted a sign? <laughs> so that wasn't the apartments? The apartments on that side. <laughs> yeah, that That was spooky. What was that? I don't know. I don't want to know. Can you get closer to us so we know you're here? Can you touch the cat ball or either of these devices to make it light up? Are you on the roof right now? <laughs> I hear it like th up there. I heard one over there. But it's almost like it echoes up. It's not a fucking car. Look down. Alright, and that concludes the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that noise again. Yeah, so yeah, what is that? That's... I heard that over here. I keep That's... hearing it behind me. Is it someone trying to break in or something? Well, if they do, they're going to be in for a ride when there's four motherfuckers here. Um, who wants to be the first one in the SS method? <clears throat> um, oh, well, she cleared her throat. Yeah, it sounds like you're ready. <laughs> I feel like I'm the worst person for this. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak with us? Three for ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> five. Well, now she's going in. Are there five of you here? Or does that mean there's somebody else here with us? There's only four of us. Today? Yes, today. Maybe it's just a ghost that can't count. <laughs> oh, you're doing that. Just he just stopped. No, I didn't. You no. did you did not do that? No, I thought that was you moving. I felt a vibration. I heard a click. I felt a vibration under my foot. That was just a I felt a just a. <laughs> do you not want to do us anymore? I heard a bunch of talking, so I was like, That's fair. "Some shit uh, happened." Well, because some some shit happened. <laughs> some shit happened. Uh, if you want us to go downstairs. Oh, and I turn the lights off down there. Mm. I can turn them back on. Please. So I think the, that's a sign to go downstairs. You want me to do that? Nothing downstairs. Are you here with us? Alive? Are you talking about our friend on the stairs? It sounds like there's a lot of tapping on it. Temperature change. 
In it, did you hear a lot of like tapping? Hey, Andrew, look to your right behind you. That's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> So after trying and failing with the Estes method, we tried other ways to talk to the spirit. What's humor in the 1920s? Um, prohibition. Or <laughs> the Three Stooges. Hit with that. If you want to talk to us, you can come back upstairs. Yeah, we're going back upstairs. You're being tippity tappity. Uh, this is some heavy duty shit. Yeah, it's based off of the Alcazar castle in Spain. Oh, the, the Alculan? Yeah, and from the 1500s, remember? That's dope. So, do you think that they were part of the uh, Zoltan tribe? Probably. Okay. For the moment. What happened? Over here now. It's literally just an only right here. I'm sorry, right there. I get closer to the light, it gets lower. What about the ladder? No. Unlucky. So it's like somewhat underneath the light, but not. Uh, it's not associated with the light. It's it moved to right here now. So we're gonna go upstairs and see if we can get anything on the balcony because we weren't able to get anything in the basement minus the one ball that cut lighting up. Uh, this stage we just had a few thuds, but nothing. God damn, no one's dying. The fucking ghost moved. Beat its ass. It's twitching. Bring your thing over here. Are you over here? All right, fuck it. This one for yes. This one for no. Are you the trench coat man? Why is it like reacting to my voice? No. Whoa. 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 <clears throat> Can you touch the other one? And stop touching that one? Uh, no, above the that, no, that's the that's the Templars from Assassin's no, Creed. Above the <laughs> uh, camera. I think so. Did you just see me sniff his ass? <laughs> can you can you send me the footage? No. <laughs> I swear to God, I just saw someone move down there. Cool. I hate this place. <laughs> Wanna go sit in the booth? It's down there. So we've certainly gotten some reactions. We've heard some things move. We've seen things light up, but just. It's not enough. Show sucks, man. It's time to give it our last go. So, Andrew, are we doing anything out here? Or are we not getting anything up here? So I say fuck it, whatever. Throw it back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so this floor didn't really see much. Are we doing one more up there? Fuck it, just give it a shot. Do something. Touch any of this. Show us that you're here. Show us that you're here. There was some sort of solid roof. Throw Evan across the room. Don't do that. Throw me across the room. Lift me 20 feet in the air and throw me down. Play with the Simon Says. Do touch the red light. Touch the green lights. Do anything. There's no reason to hide. But then on the stage, a few things started happening. Nobody moved and that one went off. That is very true. That one's been going off. I have one. That was weird. Make a noise that's obvious and we know that's not a fucking bad accident. So when we said make a noise, it did like a knock 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 back there. Yeah. No, and then there was like a squeaking creak. noise. You thought it was like a creak? It was like a creak or like a shuffle or some shit. At this point, it was late, we were flustered, we were annoyed, but hey, you know what? Well. 
this was a bust. This, yeah, I say, this ghost was a bust. But it wasn't a complete bust. For one night, we got to see history in full. We got to explore and experience what people back in what was considered by some the golden era of cinema got to see. This is easily one of the coolest places I've personally been to. And I understand now why people like Case, other volunteers, and especially Ray wanted to see this place brought back to life. But as for the ghosts, I'll let Jalen take it away. Uh, I'm finna... But see, just like I'm no ghost nut. busting needed. No ghost busting required. That's what I wanted to say. God damn. All right, I'm fucking done. Goodbye. Still, okay, bye. Oh, still a cool place to explore. Yeah, it was real cool. If, if you want to donate to help with the restoration process, the links in the description. Links right here. I don't know. All right. Well, join us next time for our ghost adventures at hopefully a haunted That's place. Trademarked. Huh. That's trademarked. Ghost, ghost hunts.